Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel Physics Surgery. Uh, today we are going to present to you a, a problem on uh, virtual work method. Uh, this, is, this is a problem picked up from the Pathfinder textbook from the topic of the methods of work and energy. And uh, in order to understand the concept of this virtual work method, I have modified the question and to a diagram that you could see in the right of the screen. Okay, so let me present to you the formal question. So this is the modified version of that particular question to understand the concept better. Uh, a pantograph is con constructed by three types of rods. So these are the three types of rods. One is a red one, as you could see, which is of length 2A, okay? And it is hinged at this, this particular point. And this is a fixed hinge, okay? And there is a blue length rod, which is 3A, and there are two such rods, as you could see. And this is also hinged. That's what a pantograph's characteristic is, right? So the rods are hinged so that they can rotate about those particular hinge points. So this is a hinge at this particular place, okay? Then, and there is a green rod, which is of length a, right, so this is the last one, which is length A, right, two green rods are there, and there is a hinge here. So let me count the hinges. This is the first one, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth. These six hinges, counted from right to left, are the movable hinges. They can move from one place to another place, whereas the hinge here is a fixed one, okay? So you could understand that if I were to pull this pantograph on the right with a force F, as you could see in the diagram, and if this thread was not there, this pantograph, this point and this point will come closer and the pantograph is set to collapse. So in order to restrain it from collapsing or prevent it from collapsing. I have tried an ideal thread between these two hinges. Okay, so you can visualize that even if I pull this one to the right, if this is ideal unbreakable thread, then the pantograph will remain in static equilibrium. Okay, so the question is based on that. So the question reads like this. So it thus forms a two rhombi of sides 2A. So can you see there is 2A rhombus here and there is another rhombus of side A here. When the right end is pulled by a force F, what's the tension in the ideal thread connected diagonally in the right side rhombus? Okay, so that's the question. So you need to find the tension in this thread in terms of the applied force F, which is pulled towards right. Okay, so assume no gravity in this particular problem and all of this is done in a singular plane. Okay, so you want to give it a try, uh, try it out and then you can follow the solution that I'm going to provide. Okay, so you can pause the video to try it right now. Let's move on to the solution. Okay, so the thing is I have drawn on the right side. I just borrowed the diagram that I just showed you and I marked certain distances here. Can you see if this diagonal length is X, right, of the uh, double sided um, rhombus, then this diagonal length should be X by two. But this point of application, I would like to measure its distance from a fixed point. It's always better in the virtual work method to measure all these distances from a fixed point. Okay, so I could have measured it from here, but this could be a movable point. Okay, so if this distance is X, I don't think you will have much trouble in believing that this distance is three X by two. Okay, so this would be our uh, raw material for the problem. Okay, now what I'm going to do is, I'm going to present the free body diagram of the thread here. Can you see, can you follow this, right? So if the tension in the thread that I'm supposed to find is T, I've put a T this way, it's, a, it's an extend, extend, uh, extendable uh, uh, tension or the tensile force, okay? So there would be a right side tension. So, but the thread is uh, inextensible, so there would be uh, no movement in the thread. Now, the right side rhombus, if I pick that structure and try to draw this particular uh, structure here. Can you see the structure that I have drawn without the thread? The, the structure will have forces F to the right. The tension in the thread which was here will act in the opposite direction and the tension I have put it in the opposite direction. Now think that uh, how virtual work method functions. Why is it called virtual work method? So we will believe that there is a small displacement, microscopic one, and under the action of that particular small displacement, we'll try to calculate the work. And since these displacements never happened, we'll try to say whatever work we have calculated is going to be adding up to zero. This is the basic gist of a uh, virtual work method, which you could use in many of the uh, pulley block problems also in constraint relations. So this is slightly different because we are not having any pulley block system here. So what I believe is if this marking, look here on the right side of the diagram, if the marking here is X, then a small displacement of this point towards right can be demarcated as DX. 
in terms of the dx this particular points rightward small displacement would have been 3 dx by 2 and that's what i'm marking here so this particular point here could be moved by a dx distance and then this particular point would be moving towards right by 3 by 2 dx please do understand that these two displacement tend to zero but they tend to zero in a different ratio so this one tends to zero much faster as compared to this particular point or you could say this is slightly higher value as compared to this that's the crux of this problem so now what i'll do is i'll try to calculate the work done by all forces on this system and say since that system is stationary i'll add up that work to zero that's the whole essence of virtual work method okay so this point of application, you could see here, is, uh, because of its movement towards right, this capital F does a positive work. You could see force and displacement are in the same direction, but this tension for the same point will do a negative work. Whereas this tension does a positive work due to this particular displacement. So I'll add up the three works simultaneously. So let me write the F that you have in the diagram minus the T in the reverse direction multiplied by 3 by 2 dx that's the work due to the 3 by 2 dx displacement and add it up to the tensions t that you have are having on the left side with a dx displacement so this entirely would be equal to zero this is the virtual work equation okay right so when you rearrange and since dx tends to zero but is not equal to zero right mathematicians won't mind if i cancel these dx's okay so it's not equal to zero but it tends to zero then you would immediately get the required value of t if you rearrange would be nothing but a 3f and that would be actually the same result if i had split up each and every rods fbd and drawn all the forces in x direction y direction and solved the entire thing you would still end up getting the same answer of 3f which we have got with less sweat here in a direct manner and that's the same way you should be solving the pathfinder problem for which this particular problem has been modified okay i hope you have uh, loved the video and please try to share and subscribe to my channel and see you in the next video